Are you tired of being thrown around each time you get into a physical battle, either at training or games? We all know that this is making you look weak and ultimately it is limiting you from delivering actual results for your team. So instead of ditching the gym because your old school coach told you that weights aren't for athletes or going there to lift like a bodybuilder, just start training smarter. If you're watching this, you're probably in the right place. So what is strength and why the heck do you need it? Strength in general is the force your neuromuscular system exerts to overcome resistance, be it a barbell or an opponent in a 1v1 scenario, and is equal to mass times acceleration. There are many types of strength like max strength, general strength, reactive strength, and strength endurance, but we are gonna focus more on max strength for the purpose of this video, which basically is the most amount of force your neuromuscular system can exert to overcome resistance during a single voluntary muscle contraction. So. Do you really need strength? The short answer is yes, you absolutely need it, especially if you have a low training age. The less trained you are, the broader the range of adaptations that can happen and the higher the potential for improvements. So by training for max strength, you can achieve great improvements in your power and speed as well, just because of the increased force outputs. You're basically killing two or even more birds with one stone, something that higher level athletes cannot do. These adaptations in strength, speed and power have a direct transfer to the playing field. A higher success rate in physical battles, increased force outputs in technical actions such as shooting, passing and crossing the ball, as well as increased confidence are all byproducts of increased strength. In other words, you will be able to beat more players, kick the ball harder and feel more confident. However, the most important benefit of them all is injury resilience. By increasing your strength, you're drastically lowering the chances of getting injured. Because as we said, strength is your ability to exert force in order to overcome a resisting force or object, whether that is an internal or external resistance. Having the strength to overcome an external or internal force will lead to less contact and non-contact injuries. So if you want to stay available for selection year-round, don't neglect your strength training. It can quite literally be a career saver for you. Having said that, how do we measure strength? How much strength is appropriate? And is there such a thing as too much strength? First of all, the most usual, cost-effective and straightforward way to measure muscular strength is by testing your one rep max scores in various lifts, especially compound ones. For more accuracy and detail in your data, there are other testing tools you can use such as isokinetic testing machines and force plates, but let's stick with the basics everyone can use the one rep max testing procedure. Your one rep max basically is the most amount of weight you can lift in a single voluntary muscle contraction in any given exercise. Now, the weight you can lift tells us many things about the force you can produce, but in order to see how strong you really are, we have to look deeper and discover your relative strength, which is your strength to body weight ratio. For example, we have two individuals that can lift the same amount of weight in the back squat, but one individual weighs 85 kilograms while the other one is weighing 75 kilograms. As you can understand, the heavier individual has a smaller relative strength compared to the lighter one, meaning that the lighter individual produces higher force outputs. All you gotta do to determine your relative strength is get your one rep max score and divide it by your body weight. The number you get is your strength to body weight ratio for that specific exercise. Usually, males that are able to lift anywhere between 1.5 to 2 times their body weight have hit a really good baseline level of strength if they're trying to reach the elite level. These norms, however, are a bit smaller for women. Let's not go super deep into this though. So, how do you develop strength? There are various ways you can achieve this, but to be honest, the fastest and most effective one seems to be lifting near or at your one rep max scores frequently during a training week. Since you're trying to push the ceiling of your strength, then following the max strength training principles you're seeing on screen right now is probably the best option. However, max strength training can't be used year-round with footballers because it is a highly demanding training stimulus. This is especially the case for injured players players that have a low training age or didn't lift for a while, and players that are doing resistance training in season. For this reason, you might as well use general strength training principles to support or even replace your max strength training. This will definitely cause less adaptations, but that's somewhat irrelevant because strength optimization isn't the end-all be-all answer to football performance, and we definitely can't prioritize the weight room over the actual game. Now, as far as exercise selection is concerned, the exercises you use should probably cover all muscle groups to avoid major strength imbalances between antagonist muscles. The exercises available are literally endless. 
we can split the exercises based on the type of muscle contraction into isometric, isokinetic and isotonic exercises which can be executed with varying tempos based on the desired outcome. Another way you can go at it is by splitting exercises into compound lifts that target major muscle groups and are usually multi-joint movements and auxiliary lifts that target smaller muscle groups or isolate a specific muscle. Then you also have bodyweight exercises versus exercises with added resistance and of course you can also split them into bilateral and unilateral exercises based on the limbs used in the movement. Now in order to make progress strength wise I just want you to keep two things in mind progressive overload and quality exercise form. On one hand progressive overload is a progressive increase of the training volume or intensity be it the weight you lift, the reps and sets you use or the work to rest ratio. By applying progressive overload you're basically protecting yourself from injuries that occur because of excess training stress. At the same time you're also pushing yourself to make measurable and safe progress by making slight increases every now and then. In other words, progressive overload is the safe route to progress you need to take. On the other hand, exercise form is the single most important thing you need to take care of in order to protect yourself against really, really silly weight room injuries. If your form is sloppy, even during those last reps, just take a step back and don't progress things. Take the slower but safer route. You won't regret this. I understand all of this info might be confusing to you and there are probably a million other things we could have included in this video. So if you want to learn and improve more, you can either start working with us right now by applying for an online coaching spot or comment your questions below and watch this video next. Have a good one guys.